If you want to create an audio plugin or a C++ application and you want to use for that purpose the Juice C++ framework, you always have the problem how to include Juice as a dependency, right? You can just simply download the sources, which is probably the worst option. You can uh, use Git sub modules, which is probably a little bit better option. And of course you can use some third party package manager and one of them is VC package. So already on this channel, I've covered how to use juice with a CPM package manager. And today we'll see, we'll see exactly step by step how to use the VC package manager to have juice as a dependency. So let's get started. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from dwolfsound.com and on this channel, you can learn how to process sound using self-written software and to process sound with juice, we need to include it as a dependency. So let's see how to do it using Microsoft's VC package, C++ package manager. So we'll start with a completely empty repository. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna init this. So I'm gonna git init dot. So we have an empty repository now. And now what we want to do, we want to include VC package as a sub module. And you can say, okay, why cannot we simply use juice as a sub module? Where, because using VC package streamlines using juice and other dependencies uh, way more than the Git sub module. So I think it's okay to have VC package as Git sub module, but then it's way easier to use VC package to download juice and all the other dependencies and manage their versions. So what we have to do to include VC package as a dependency. Well, we need to go git submodule add, and in this way we specify that we're adding VC package as a git submodule. And now I'll paste here the address of the VC package repository. As you can see, it's on GitHub. And I'll go enter. Okay, and now this submodule is being cloned. Okay, we have added VC package as a submodule. So now what we probably like to do, we'd like to commit this change. So let's see, git status, what change? Okay, we have new file git submodules and VC package. And we also uh, got already created this VS code folder. So let me go ahead and simply write git commit message add that VC package as a git submodule. And let me commit this. Okay, so now we have cloned the VC package, but that's not all that is necessary to set up VC package in our project. The next thing we need to do is we need to download the VC package.exe. And for this to work, we need to launch the bootstrap script. So there's a specific bootstrap script for each and every platform that uh, you are using. So the, there'll be a uh, bash script for macOS and Linux, but for Windows, it's a bat batch script. So let me show you how it's done. So we're going uh, to the VC package directory, right? And then there is the bootstrap VC package. And that's uh, exactly the script for Windows because I'm on Windows. And what I like to do also, I like to simply pass dash disable metrics to disable metrics. Like you don't have to do this if you want to, but I typically do this. So let's run this. And now it downloaded VC package.exe. And this exe is exactly the package manager that we're going to use. So you could have VC package anywhere on your system, but uh, I typically like to include it as a sub module of your project because this allows us to easily use VC package in our continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. So let's go with this flow. You can have another one. So now VC package is ready to be used. And now we need to define uh, that we want to use it in the most recommended, the manifest mode. And what it means, you'll see in a moment, but uh, we need to specify that we'd like to, init let's say, initialize VC package for this re uh, repository. So go VC package, and now we'll go VC package.exe, that's the file that's the package manager we want to use. And we're going new and dash dash application. Okay, what happened? VC package creating these two files here, VC package configuration.json and VC package.json. So let's see what is inside these files. So in the configuration, it says, 
which version of the package registry should be used. It's basically kind of a log to say, okay, this VC package is taking packages from this version of the package repository. And uh, if I understand it right, this is safe to do in the sense that if you want to obtain newer versions of the packages, you may need to update this baseline. But uh, this baseline tells VC package that, okay, this version of the full package repository is something that one, that the VC package in your project should use. And it will not, you know, randomly uh, download different versions of projects. So, but that's, that file is not that important. You should version this, of course, but it's not that important. What's important is the manifest, this VC package.json, because here we'll have all our dependencies listed. And we can already uh, start using this. And we to add the juice as a dependency, we simply go vc package, vc package dot exe, add port, and now comes the name of the package that we want to have. So this, in our case, it's juice. Okay, as you can see, dependency juice was added to our project to our repository. So now we're dependent on juice. Great, but how to use it? How to how to even download juice in this case? Well, for this, we can start uh, with, I think what's the most common workflow with C++ is to use CMake. So for this, we need to create the top level CMake file that will describe the, our full C++ project. And in this file, we'll say, okay, we want to use juice as a dependency. And VC package will simply deliver this dependency to us. So I'm go gonna create file cmake list.txt. Okay, and here I'm creating the typical cmake uh, code. So first thing we need to specify the minimum version for cmake. So cmake minimum required. And I'll go 3.22 because that's what juice demands. And then I go project and I'll call this juice VC package demo and then I'll go that's the important line find package juice config required so this will actually uh, force you know the VC package to deliver us what is contained in the juice package but uh, believe me, now Juice is not even installed, right? We just declared that we want to have it. You have not seen any downloading taking place. So uh, that's because the downloading of packages happens during project generation. And it's a step when you're using the CMake workflow, you have the CMake list.txt file, then you generate the project. And that's the point where the dependencies will be downloaded. So typical approach is to have CMake-S dot because the cmake list txt file is in the folder that we're currently in then dash b and specify the build folder it's that where we want to files to be the project files to be generated to and for vc package specifically we want to have the vc package toolchain use if we go here v vc package and we go into scripts then build systems and here we have vc package dot cmake so uh, that's the toolchain file that we want to use. And we do it, we tell it to CMake to use this toolchain file like this. We pass a dash D to define a cached variable. And then we say CMake underscore toolchain file assign. And then we pass the path to this VC package dot CMake. So I'll go copy relative path okay and this once again should generate our project with cmake and for cmake to know where the dependencies are we pass this toolchain file and this toolchain file should take care of downloading the dependencies so this will take a moment if you've reached this point in the video and you don't know what juice is let me quickly explain. Juice is an open source cross-platform C++ application development framework that makes it easy to create audio software as well as audio plugins and plugin hosts. You can write code once and build VST 
AU, AUV3, AAX, LV2 plugins on Windows, macOS, iOS, Android, and Linux, as well as embedded platforms. I've been successfully using Juice since 2018, both in my private and professional projects, so I'm delighted that they're sponsoring the video. I especially like how Juice makes it easy for beginners to jump right into creating audio plugins and applications without worrying about C++ quirks. Juice is used by the majority of the world's most important audio companies, but it is free for personal use and there's affordable pricing available for companies just starting out. Apart from the framework itself, Juice has an amazing community of users gathered in the Juice forum, which is a great resource to learn audio programming on its own. Most recently, the Juice team has released Juice version 8, which contains many new features, including WebView plugin UIs, which is very exciting. To start using Juice now, go to juice.com, download Juice, and follow their Getting Started guide. I have also put the link to it in the description. Have fun creating audio apps and plugins. And now, back to the tutorial. Okay, so this downloaded Juice, and as you can see, we have uh, these Juice targets that we, we can link against, and these targets that we can li link against. So, uh, and we also, what is maybe not written here, but we also got some, the typical Juice CMake commands that we can use. So how to test that this setup works? Well, I'm going to simply copy the audio plugin from Juice CMake examples. If you are on GitHub on uh, Juice framework slash Juice, you can see that there's the example folder and here's the CMake folder and here's this audio plugin folder. I have this folder locally on my disk, so I'm just going to copy it to this repository. Okay, as you can see, these files are here. And uh, what I simply need to do, I need to do here at subdirectory audio plugin. And this should build the example plugin. Uh, so once again, we should run this command, right? To regenerate the project because we changed the CMake file. But actually what's better to do is to create CMake presets. So we can go here and we can go CMake presets dot JSON and uh, Microsoft has already uh, provided like a boilerplate or like a default version for uh, the VC package. So you, as you can see, it's exactly uh, here. What we can change here is this, uh, we because we have it locally, so we can don't have to specify the root. And then one last thing, I'll change the generator uh, to the one that I'm using. And in this case, I'm using Visual Studio 17 2022. So instead of using this very long command, which is very hard to memorize, we can just go cmake dash dash preset and then go default. And it should do exactly the same thing. As you can see, cmake toolchain file is exactly what we specified. And again, uh, just is detected as a dependency. It doesn't have to be downloaded again. And it like the project has been generated. So we can now build it using the standard CMake build command. So we go CMake dash dash build and build, which is the name of our folder where we generated our project to. Okay, as you can see, our project did build. And if we go to build audio plugin, audio plugin example artifacts, debug, we have VST3 and standalone right here. We can even run it. Exactly, we have hello world, hello world, that's our plugin. But that's not all, right? We just built an example plugin, but now how to process sound with it, how to change things about it, how to change the UI. For this, we need to know C++, we need to know digital audio effects. Maybe you want to you know, create a synthesizer, so we need to know synthesis techniques, we need to know how to create presets, etc., etc. And if you're curious, like what you need to know, in my opinion, to create audio plugins, that I encourage you to check out my free audio plugin developer checklist, which lists every bit and piece of knowledge that I believe is necessary to create audio plugins. You can get it for free at dwolfsound.com slash checklist. And there you can see what you already know and maybe what you would like to learn. And if you'd like to learn these things, I 
encourage you to subscribe to this channel to learn exactly sound synthesis, digital audio effects, C++, the Juice C++ framework, and all the technologies related to processing sound with software. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.